Hello everyone, in this lesson we're going to learn how to play music on your Sega Mega Drive. Fortunately the coding is fairly straightforward and we don't have to go to the links that you're seeing on your screen right here, but if you're interested in what's going on in this video then I'll include a link because it's well worth a watch. Earlier this year included in the SGDK 2.0 update was the new sound driver, the XGM2. As you can see here, the legendary chiptune composer Yuzo Koshiro was very excited about the release. So to start off with, we're going to compare XGM, the original sound driver, with this new XGM2 and see which one might be most suitable for you. This post here from the creator of SGDK, Stefan, does a really good job of summarizing the differences. If I were to summarize it, I would say the biggest advantage of XGM2 and why it was created was the fact that it allows you to use a much smaller ROM size, so a much smaller cartridge, because after all, the music tends to be the biggest, the largest uh, portion of any ROM of any cartridge, so trying to get that um, as small as possible and squeeze it into, say, a four megabyte cartridge if possible is a, is a really great thing that lots of people have been asking for. And as I'm highlighting here, one of the ways it does that is by using smaller um, sample sizes for these sound effects. However, the probably the biggest space saver is the fact that when you have a PCM sound effect used on this sixth channel, for example, if you're using a certain drum PCM sound effect and you want to use it on the 6FM channel and you have that same drums within say four different tracks under the old XGM driver you'd have to upload that sample four times one per track but with this new XGM2 you have the ability to have it so that one single drum sample is shared across the four tracks so it's only uploaded onto the ROM once which obviously saves a lot of space. Unfortunately these improvements to XGM2 did come with some drawbacks the biggest of which is the fact that under the original XGM driver the first one you had four PCM channels so one of those was you normally use for the music then you had three for sound effects but under the new XGM2 driver you only have three so one for the music and two for the sound effects was obviously quite a big loss. Okay now I've introduced these two sound drivers let's get on with the coding and thankfully the setup is very simple we just pretty much got a blank project just with uh, resources.res included and we're in resources.res we're going to um, upload our sound file and let's start with the original old XGM driver. The pattern is very simple, just use XGM just to let the system know that you're using the old driver. Then give the music track a name, any name you want, so I'm calling this my track. And then finally, within these two quotation marks, put the name of the file and don't forget to do .vgm because vgm are the files that we need to use in SGDK. So don't try and use like an mp3 file here. After saving and compiling, let's go back to our main.c uh, file and you don't want to um, play the music within the game loop because then it will just keep trying to restart the music again and again because it, obviously that goes once every frame. Instead we want to do it within main between where it says main and just before the while loop. So to play the music we're going to select xgm do an underscore and here you can see all the different functions connected with the XGM driver and we're going to use just a few of these today. The one we want to do now is start play and simply in the brackets all you have to do is write the name that we gave our music track. So in this case I wrote my track so paste that in there and end with the semicolon and that should be it in terms of playing the music. Now let's save and compile and see how it sounds in an emulator. Okay, so that's playing great. And just for your information, the track playing there is from Gigi Shinobi 2. Now that of course was a Game Gear game, but Aliana, one of the musicians who's been doing lots of tracks for not only Symphony of the Night, my, my project there, but also the entire music for the Gigi uh, Shinobi remake. So he did this track here. I'm not about to do Gigi Shinobi 2. I don't have any plans to do that right now. I have my hands full enough with Symphony of the Night and the first Gigi Shinobi, but it's still great to hear that track as a Mega Drive version. And I will leave a link here so you can listen to it in full. Now let's go ahead and explore some other functions within the old XGM driver. One I want to do now is the looping. So when you do the XGM start play, that function there, it's pretty much going to play the same track over and over again. It's not going to be an infinite amount of times, it's actually going to be 255 times. For most purposes that's going to be fine, but if you want to change this for any reason you can use this function here, this xgm underscore set loop number. 
Now, if you set it to minus one, it means it's just going to repeat 255 times, which is the default. But if you set it to zero, for example, the track will play just once and then it will stop, which might be useful for maybe a, a title screen music, or I'm sure you can think of some other circumstances where that would be useful. And if you want to play two times, you'll set it to one, three times to two and so on and so on. Earlier in the lesson, I showed a post from Yuzo Koshiro when he was very excited about the new XGM2 driver. And one of the things he was excited about was the ability to change the tempo, i.e. the speed of the music. As the creator of SGDK and the XGM2 driver, Steph pointed out in his reply, actually changing the tempo was a feature of the old driver as well. So while we're using the old driver, let's try and do that now. So let's change the tempo of the music. So we can use xgem underscore set music tempo. And then within the brackets, you simply uh, write how fast you want it to be. The default value is 60, i.e. 60 frames per second. And, but you can change that to whatever you want. So a half speed will be 30 frames and double speed will be 120, for example. Although I've never had the need to use this with any of my games so far, I can see circumstances where it would be useful. For example, if you're going to do a, a shoot 'em up game where suddenly the ship speed increase dramatically and there's lots of enemies on the screen, maybe you want to double the tempo or something, but I'm sure you can find lots of creative ways to use it. And if you are going to use it, make sure you call the function after you use the xgm underscore start play, otherwise it won't work. And if we now change that value to 120, we should get the track at double speed. Just to round off the useful functions using the old sound driver, you also have ones, for example, xgm underscore pause play, which obviously just stops the play, it pauses the track. So you might want to use this in maybe for cutscenes or something. And obviously you would have to place this at some point within your game loop maybe judged by a, a button press or a timer or something. And then of course you have resume play if you want to resume the track after pausing it. Okay, so now we've covered a lot of the old XGM driver. Now let's take a look at the brand new XGM2 driver, find out how we play music and see if there's any extra things that we can do with this one. Back in resources.res, instead of xgm, we simply use xgm2 and the rest of it is the same as normal. In main.c, the process for planning music is also very similar. Again, we want to use call the function uh, just before the game loop. And this time we do xgm2 underscore play, then open the brackets and then put the track name. And if we save and compile, we should get this result. If we look at XGM2's other functions, we'd recognize a lot from the old driver. So you have things, for example, such as um, pausing the play and also resuming the play. And we also have the set loop number two. But the ones I want to focus on here are the ones that Yuzo Koshiro was also very excited about. And that is the fade in and out, because unlike the set tempo, this is a feature that really is exclusive to the new XGM2 driver. These are very easy to use, simply type xgm2 underscore fade in and within the brackets you want to let the system know how many frames you want the fade in or fade out to take place over. So 120 there would have been 2 seconds but let's change it to 240, I have 4 seconds just to make it more obvious. And if you wanted to fade out the music, that's pretty much the same. So it's very straightforward. As I said at the beginning of the lesson, the files that the XGM drivers use are the VGEM files. So if there are any favorite songs from you know, games you played in the past, for example, you know, Streets of Rage Shinobi or any you can think of, and you want to play those on your Mega Drive as part of your little fan game, of course, it can't be a commercial game using other people's songs. What you can do is simply use a search engine, search for the name of the song or the game that you want the songs from, uh, type in, you know, VGM and then download and I'm sure you'll find the relevant links online. And if you happen to come across uh, download VGZ files instead of VGM, the solution is very simple. All you have to do is take the VGZ file, music file, 
uh, simply unzip it using some unzipping uh, decompression software and then all you have to do is simply change the name of the change the um, extension of the file to .vgm and it should work fine. I hope you enjoyed about playing music on the Mega Drive and the various functions you can use to, to alter it. In next week's lesson we're going to cover how to make music for the Mega Drive. Now not being a professional musician myself, it's going to be more of an idiot's guide to making music on the Mega Drive and I'll include uh, links and give advice on how to study it further in case you really want to get into the music side of things so that should be a fun lesson. Okay, so that's it for this tutorial. Thanks so much for watching. If you're interested in this kind of content, then don't forget to subscribe to the channel. I'm interested in this. And if you wish to support the channel further and want to get extra things, for example, the code for each lesson, then I have a patron and any support is much appreciated. You won't go unrewarded. Until next time. Farewell.